If there is a single most important element on Earth, it is carbon. Carbon is a non-metal found in every living thing. In fact, it is essential to life as we know it. In its simplest elemental form, carbon is the crumbly black substance composing soot. Compress it to a higher density and it becomes graphite found in the familiar number two pencil. With substantial heat and pressure, it becomes a rare and dazzling gem. But as beautiful as a cut diamond might be, the real beauty of carbon lies in its versatility. Carbon is so versatile because it can form many different types of compounds and many different types of bonds. As a result, it can form a very large variety of compounds with different properties. Very, very large solids, very, very small gases, liquids. It can form all types of compounds, and as a result, it's very versatile. At the heart of carbon's versatility is its position on the periodic table of elements. Carbon is tetravalent, meaning it has four valence electrons so it can form up to four bonds with other atoms. And those bonds can be single bonds, double bonds, or triple bonds. Most often, those bonds are with other carbon atoms. We can attach carbons to one another and form very long chains, like we see in polymers, like polyethylene in your water bottle and things like that. Or it can form ring systems where we take a chain, circle the two ends around, and attach them to one another. Other atoms or groups of atoms called functional groups often attach to carbon chains and rings, changing the properties of the molecule. The result is an unimaginable number and variety of carbon molecules, most of which fall into the category of organic compounds. An organic compound is a molecule that contains carbon primarily most of the weight is carbon and generally will can also contain some hydrogen atoms with it carbon's versatility is unique while other group four elements also have four valence electrons they cannot duplicate carbon's achievements hi everyone professor stefaro here i want to give you a few more details about carbon and its role in forming organic molecules the introductory video identified carbon as a diverse atom. Carbon-based molecules are called organic compounds, and carbon can bond with four elements. In the center of this figure, we see a tent-like structure when carbon binds to four hydrogens to form methane. This is the uh, tetravalent nature of carbon, its ability to form four bonds with four different elements, and it creates this tetrahedron-like arrangement that is unique to carbon and why it's used as the organic element. Carbon is the building block for life. Here we see the building blocks of the biological hierarchy and carbon down at the base because it's the atom that's going to eventually form our organic molecules. And we recognize these organic molecules from the foods that we eat. These are all example of carbon-based molecules in these major groups that we know as food. Carbohydrates are the organic compounds that serve as the cell's fuel. Additionally, they can be stored for fuel in the future and form cell structures. Lipids serve indirectly as cellular food, hormones, vitamins, and cell structures. Proteins serve to provide many structures and functions of the cell. Examples are enzymes, hormones, and muscle. Nucleic acids store direct and express genetic information by synthesizing proteins. And the most famous nucleic acid we have is DNA. Here we see a food label listing those different biological molecules that we eat. We incorporate those molecules into our bodies and then cells use them for energy and for structure. In future videos, I will describe each of those four biological groups, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. 
but I want to focus in on carbon making organic molecules first. Compounds composed of only carbon and hydrogen are called hydrocarbons. The grade area in each of these molecules is referred to as the carbon skeleton. Hydrocarbon molecules are going to be non polar molecules, which means that they're very hydrophobic. So when you see any organic molecule that is carbon and hydrogen, then it makes it a hydrophobic molecule, a nonpolar molecule. And because of carbon's tetravalent nature, we can build carbon skeletons in a variety of ways. We can vary the length, we can vary the branching pattern of the carbon skeleton. The molecule changes when we add double or triple bonds. And carbon molecules can also form skeletons that are in the form of a ring. So let's take each of these. So organic molecules can vary in the number of carbons that form the molecule. So here we can see the carbon skeletons increase in length as we increase the number of carbons. So ethane with its two, propane with its three carbons. When we branch carbons off of each other, that's going to make totally different molecules as well. So butane with four carbons in a linear fashion is going to be a different molecule than isobutane that we see branching. If we take a look at their molecular formulas, we'll see that both of them are identical to each other. Butane with four carbons and 10 hydrogens, isobutane with four carbons and 10 hydrogens. But because of the branching arrangement of the carbon skeleton versus the linear, it makes two completely different organic molecules with different characteristics. And we're going to come back and talk about this example again in a future slide. Another way that organic molecules can vary in the carbon skeleton is by the presence of double or triple bonds. Here we see two molecules with four carbons in the skeleton, but the position of the double bond is different and that makes for a very different molecule. Notice also here that the suffix has changed. Before we were talking about butane, but now we're talking about butene, and the ENE -E ending tells us that there are double bonds in the carbon skeleton of this molecule. Lastly, again, are the rings. Carbons can form ring structures that make unique organic molecules. I'd like you to pause the video now and determine the molecular formula of cyclohexane and for benzene and see how you do. Okay, here's the answer. Cyclohexane with only single bonds between the carbons is C6H12, but benzene with double bonds between the carbons and the skeleton is C6H6. So here the suffixes tell us, again, the presence or absence of double bonds in the molecule. Here's some other things to think about when you're reading about molecules and their names. The prefix tells you how many carbon atoms are in the molecule. So meth is one, eth or acet is two, pro is three, but is four. So you can see methane, ethane, propane, and butane. If we talked about pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane, we would have described molecules all the way up to having 10 carbons in that hydrocarbon molecule. The suffix, as I mentioned before, tells us the kind of covalent bonds associated with the carbon skeleton. So the A-N-E ending, as in propane, means that there's only single covalent bonds in the carbon skeleton. The E-N-E -E ending tells us there's a double bond. And the Y-N-E-S ending, as in propyne on the far right at the bottom, tells us that there's a triple bond within the carbon skeleton. Other suffixes are going to tell us the kind of molecules that are attached to the carbon skeletons. These groups are called functional groups, and they will make the carbon skeleton now 
hydrophilic because it's going to add components that contain either oxygen or nitrogen and that's going to change the characteristic of our organic molecules. So one such group is the OH group or hydroxyl group and these make alcohols. So when you see the OL ending it tells us that there is a hydroxyl group attached to the carbon skeleton. Another one is the amine group. The amine group has nitrogen with two hydrogens as in ethyl amine and it tells us that there is a nitrogen group, this amine group, attached to the carbon skeleton. Organic molecules name says acid in it as in acetic acid then it's going to have this molecular group called a, a carboxylic acid has carbon, two hydrogens, and that hydroxyl group. And then the last one is the O-N-E as in acetone, and it has a double bonded oxygen to the carbon skeleton. So now these are going to become hydrophilic when added to the carbon skeleton and change the properties of the organic molecule in that way. The next video is on functional groups, so I'd like you to do that one next and that'll tie up how we describe organic molecules in a general way. Three types of isomers are structural isomers, which differ in the covalent partnerships between their atoms, geometric isomers, which vary in arrangement of atoms around a double bond, enantiomers or stereoisomers which are molecules that are mirror images of each other like left and right hands. So isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula but different structural formulas and our butane and isobutane are perfect examples of that. They had the same molecular formula remember C4 and H10 but one is linear and one is branching. And one of the ways that we can describe their difference is by the boiling point. That's what BP means there. So butane has a boiling point at zero degrees Celsius, but isobutane, very different, negative 12 degrees Celsius. The optical or stereoisomer are molecules that are mirror images of one another. They can't be superimposed, but they can uh, have the same molecular components. They'll have a very similar carbon skeleton, but the way the functional groups attach make them optical isomers of each other. And in this example, these are two generic amino acids that are going to be different molecules because of their arrangement. Okay, that'll, that's the end for today. Go on to the functional groups and I'll see you next time.